Hey folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things. And Christmas is coming. If you celebrate that sort of thing. I mean, I guess it's also coming if you don't celebrate it since that's how calendars work. But the point is that it's the holidays and I couldn't think of anything more relevant to the holiday season than making a nightmare inducing realistic version of Toad. I don't know, I'm not good at Christmas stuff. Anyways, the first step is going to be making a nice sturdy frame to build off of by rolling up a whole whack of foil and covering it in clay. Then I'll drill four limb appropriate holes into limb appropriate locations so that I can chop down some wire and stick it in place. Ow! And once I've got the legs down to the right length, I can mount it on one of my sculpting blocks. To help the next layer of clay adhere, I'm going to cover my moldy grey potato and bacon bond, then add a thin layer of clay over top taking care to prevent any bubbles from forming underneath. If I leave little pockets of air between the layers of clay, then as it's baking in the oven, those pockets of air will heat up and escape through the path of least resistance. This results in lots of cracks and breaks in the final product. And while they're easy to fix after the fact, why do the extra work if you don't have to? So once I've got my second skin grafted on top, I can start adding in all the detail. Of course, Toad doesn't really have much detail to work with in the first place, so I think the trick is going to be greatly exaggerating what's there. For instance, I'm going to be turning his white adult diapers into a pair of parachute pants that I think would even make Mr. Hammer happy. Now another pretty important part of Toad's physique is his spherical shape, and I want to make sure that I preserve that as much as possible, but I also want to make him a tiny bit more humanoid, so I'm going to give him some man boobs. Now before I go any further with his body, I need to get his head sorted out, so I'm going to roll up a nice big ball of foil, cover it in clay, and then start refining the shape. Toad's head, much like the rest of his body, is pretty simple in design, but once added to the hole, it really makes him the character that he is. It's also going to be the only thing that I can really change to make him more realistic. I'm going to give him lots of wrinkles, cracks, and surface textures while retaining the three most important features. His big black eyes, his happy smile, and the relative size of his head. Uh, and the mushroom on top. That's probably what's going to make the biggest difference. He has a mushroom for a head. Speaking of which, let's make it. Same as everything else, I'll start with a nice big ball of aluminium squashed to an appropriate size. At this point, Toad is roughly 10% clay, 90% foil, uh, and 100% reason to remember the name. Now, I don't know if the mushroom part of his head is like his forehead, or if it's his hair, or if it's another part of his head, but because the top of a mushroom is called a cap, I'm going to refer to this as his hat from now on. And to keep his hat in place, I'm going to wrap long wormy dealies around the connecting point between his head and his hat, and then blend them together, making sure to give him that sort of creepy gill looking thing that the underside of mushrooms have. Then I'll impale that head on a spike that I've already stuck into the body. It's also at this point that I'm going to sit back and wonder what the f**k I'm doing with my life. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not. I'll blend his neck into his shoulders with some thick wormy dealies, then using the sharp edge of my sculpting tool, I'll add some cuts to the edge of his hat. I've also decided that his head is a bit too small, so I'll thicken up his jowls and chin by adding a bit more clay around the bottom. Once I've got a shape and size I'm happy with, I can start adding in the surface detail. I figure a real life toad would be kind of wrinkly and wizened, so I'm going to give lots of little cracks and surface imperfections. And it's time to really make those pants hammer time worthy. At the moment, they look like a pair of well-worn sweatpants, so to bulk them out and make them a lot more parachute-y, I'll add lots of little wormy dealies that I can then blend in and smooth out, which will leave me with some really smart looking billowy yoga pants. To add a bit of texture to the pants and help smooth away some of the tooling marks, I'll use this old rag that I found that's got a pretty good looking pattern. By pressing it into the clay, I can easily add a bit of surface texture to the pants without having to do any actual work, and that's, that's really the kind of effort I'm all about. Now speaking of easy texture, blue nitrile gloves. Just slap a pair on, pull the tip tight, and start poking. Uh, phrasing? Otherwise, with the texture done, it's into the oven for the first bake, and... Tragedy. Remember those pockets of air I was talking about at the start of the video? Well, I didn't listen to my own advice, and when I was baking Toad's hat, I ended up leaving a gap between the foil and the clay at the bottom of the hat, and it ended up ballooning out and tearing free. 
Totally intentional on my part, of course, since there's no mistakes here, just happy accidents. I also realized that I don't need the wires for his arms, so I'll yank those out to make it easier to make his fancy blue vest. I'm gonna make it out of cosplay, since it's quite flexible when it's baked, so it works pretty well for thin pieces. Once I've got the vest sized and tailored, I'll use some hole punches to punch some holes for his arms. Then I'll clean up the edges, make it look pretty, and reattach his hat. To make his arms, I've rolled out a worm of clay roughly the size of a cocktail sausage, then chopped it in half, and rolled out two slightly smaller wormy dealies. Then it's just a case of squishing, smoothing, and folding until I've got an appropriately shaped, surprisingly sassy mushroom man arm. Then I'll carve some fingers out, add some wrinkles and folds, and then stick on a thumb. Repeat the process for the other arm, then stick them in place. And to help strengthen the connection, hide the seams, and add a bit of detail, I'll add some teeny tiny wormy dealies on the shoulders, then blend them into the vest to give them some teeny tiny sleeves. And I can add the final surface textures in much the same way as I did for the face and belly. Otherwise, that's the sculpting finished, and it's into the oven for a final bake, and we're ready for pre-paint priming. Now, I considered going retro with Toad, but decided that even my dislike of painting can't justify being that lazy. Fortunately, the modern version of Toad still only uses about four colors, so it should be a pretty easy job. His pants and hat get a nice white base coat, and then I'll paint all of his exposed skin with an appropriately pale skin tone. I also added some lighter highlights along the cheeks, nose, and eyebrows, but they don't show up particularly well on camera. Trust me though, I totally did them and they look amazing in person. I'll add a bit of depth and shading to the wrinkles and surface textures by applying a dirty red wash over the skin tone before coating the pants in a light grey wash, allowing it to drain down into the creases of the pants before wiping away the excess. It ended up sticking to the not-quite-cured white paint, but I kind of like the end results so I left it as it is. Then I applied the same wash over the cuts in his hats before moving on to his fancy blue vest. This gets a once over with a dark blue vest blue, then I'll add the edge stitching with a very liberal coating of gold. Then his shoes get painted brown and his eyes get coated with the darkest, most soul destroying black that I could find. And then once they've dried, I'll cover them in a thin layer of UV resin to give them an unsettling amount of gloss. Finally, I'll use some very, very vibrant red to paint the red circles onto his hat before deciding that this just kind of looks lazy and I'll remake them using some red clay. These just get stuck in place and smoothed out until the clay is covering the red circles I painted Then I'll add some random mushroom-esque texture. However, because I've covered the eyes in UV resin, I can't put Toad back in the oven to cure the clay, so I'll just blast the red bits with my heat gun until they're not just hard, but they're hard enough. But with that, we're finished, and on to the glamour shots. There you go, folks. I didn't know what to get you for Christmas, so instead I just made you this. Uh, and it's the thought that counts, right? Speaking of things that count, I'd like to thank the people that I know I can count on to keep this channel alive, my delightful patrons. And of course, I'd like to give a big shout out to my newest patrons, Liz Stein, Hannah Leach, Rave Solid, Matthew Osborne, Soleil Zahn, Liam Eckberg, Courtney, Sam, Guillaume Gullumhausen, and Simia Morgana. You are the terrifyingly detailed head that holds up the mushroom cap that is this channel. If you'd like to help out, then consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and leaving me a comment down below. Otherwise, we'll uh, see you next time. Cheers.